I'm Santiago, and I'm going into eighth grade. I've been playing clarinet for eight years. My name is Yao Guangzhai. I'm the principal clarinetist with the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, and I'm also the associate professor at the Boston Conservatory at Ber Berkeley. Uh, I've been playing the clarinet for 26 years. So, Santi, how did you start playing the clarinet? Well, I got accepted into a school called Special Music School in Manhattan, and I basically, I was playing piano, not like seriously, but um, uh, when I said I wanted to play piano, they said there was a bit too much, too many pianists. Uh, so I, uh, they gave me uh, different choices and I thought clarinet would be fun to try. So I started on recorder and now wow. here I am. <laughs> nice, wonderful. And how about you? Oh, well, uh, actually I didn't choose music. I didn't choose the clarinet because when I was uh, about three years old, my father gave me a baby-sized violin. Have you played the violin before? No. Not really. So, you know, when you, you've heard the violin, right? Yes. Yeah, because, you know, when you play the baby-sized violin, the sound is not as good as the normal size. So when I was about three years old, uh, my father made me practice about six hours a day because, you know, he wanted me to become a professional violin player when I was, uh, when I was born. Uh, and I was, when I was about six years old, five years old, I started you know, doing competitions, I started playing uh, solo recitals. But, uh, you know, I didn't have fun, I didn't enjoy it because I wanted to play with other kids, you know, I wanted to go out, but I, I couldn't, you know. So uh, when I was about 10 years old, I thought I was big enough. We had, I had the opportunity to let him know that I did not enjoy the violin. And of course, he was, he was disappointed, but uh, after a couple of months later, he came home with this. He said, yeah, you know, let's, why don't you try it? I have a friend who is a professional clarinet player in the local orchestra. You know, he can teach you the clarinet. It's a, it's a fun instrument, it's, it might be an easier instrument. So I, uh, I, start, I tried it, I started playing the clarinet, and all of a sudden it clicked. I love the sound, I love the dynamic. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's easier <laughs> than the violin but I definitely love it uh, since then. Santi, what are the challenges you have faced? Well, there have been quite a few, but one main one was probably uh, mo the motivation to practice mm -hmm. because it was, I never really had much motivation to practice and it was very rare if I had, but, I tried to keep myself motivated so I could improve and because practicing always makes you improve and yeah. Yeah, nice. What have been some challenges for you? Um, so I've, you know, I've faced many challenges before. The so most one was I came to the States when I was about 17 years old. I was older than you, but still I was young. I came to this country with very little money, I didn't speak any English. Uh, you know, I have to start all over ag again by myself. But the, luckily, uh, the schools I went to were very, very generous. And uh, I had many, many wonderful teachers who helped me tremendously. So I'm really grateful. Uh, and the, right now, the biggest challenge is because I, uh, I'm playing the orchestra, I'm, I'm, I'm also teaching at the school, and I also have family, I have two, two young boys. So uh, it's hard for me to manage the time between uh, practicing because I have to keep myself in the shape, uh, take care of my family and to spend time with my students. So that is the challenge I'm facing right now. Uh, another challenge for me was uh, when I first entered the Curtis Institute in Philadelphia, you know, I, uh, from day one, I was surrounded with these wonderful young musicians from all over the world. Um, and you know, so all the, the pressure, all the sudden comes to you. And I was extremely nervous every day. And uh, at one point I 
didn't know if I can make it because you know all of these uh, friends, our schoolmates, they are just so wonderful. But uh, again, thank thankfully my teachers were tremendously, uh, they helped me tremendously. Um, and uh, all of my friends, they were really, really generous. And we were playing uh, chamber music, we were playing in the orchestra. So after one or two years, I started to to feel like you know I can I can uh, become one of them, so um, yeah, so that was a great experience for me. So, do you have any memorable memorable performance in the past? Well, yes. Um, when I uh, performed in Taiwan with my parents. Uh, uh, at the National Theater, uh, theater, um, it was just such a nice experience because there were so many people, and I, I just like it when there's more people, more people, and uh, yeah, the, and they also what what was the biggest memory of, of that was that they clapped for me when in the in the middle of the piece when I, when it was. But I never had that happen, and it wasn't just one of those mistakes. It was they actually clapped because they were enjoying, and yeah, that was really memorable for me. Awesome. What about you? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Speaking of you know playing for people, I, I I have many great memorable performances, but the reason one was right before COVID, um, the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra were, uh, have had a tour in Europe. And one of the concerts was in London at the BBC Prom. We played at the Royal Albert Hall. You know the hall is about 5,000 seats. And in front of the orchestra, that's in the middle of the audience, there's about a couple of hundred standing uh, seats. So people would stand in front of the orchestra, so in front, right in front of you. Uh, it really, really felt like a rock concert because you, you can see people are moving with you. Um, and, and, and you were saying, you know, you love playing for a big crowd. Actually, me too, because uh, that was really memorable because after we finished the symphony, after we fi finished the encores, I could literally feel the floor was shaking because people were exploding. They were so loud. They were cheering for us for, like, for, a, for a long time. And even after the concert, I was walking back um, to the hotel and the people were still on, on the street. People were still asking you know, if you're from Baltimore Symphony, how much they appreciate the, the concert. So, um, I mean, speaking of this really reminds me of how much I love performing for live people, for live audience, for big crowds. And I'm really look forward to perform and to have that experience again. I'm going to play in an orchestra soon. And nice. I want to task, uh, what was your first experience, orchestral experience like? Mm -hmm. So uh, the first time I played in orchestra was back when I was studying in China, in, in Beijing. Uh, I was about 12, 13 years old, just like your age. And I remember it like yesterday. Uh, it was Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 1, and I played the second clarinet. And I still remember how excited I was, just uh, surrounded by you know, other players. Uh, right after the rehearsal, I went to the bookstore, I bought the CD with the Berlin Philharmonic, and I just kept listening and listening and listening. I want to remember my part, and I want to remember other players' part. Uh, that was really awesome and really fun, and, I, and I'm sure you will have the same experience soon. So is there anything you are interested in doing in the future in music? Yeah, um, well, I I would love to like tour with an orchestra and also, you know, see a lot of places I didn't see, mm -hmm. even though I've traveled a lot, I'd like to travel even more and right. see more of Europe. And yeah, it would be nice to be able to collaborate with a lot of uh, musicians in an orchestra and travel around the world. How about you? Is there anything you're looking forward to in the future? Well, right, right now, I'm just looking forward uh, to wait until the pandemic is fully over. I can go back to perform for a big crowd with no worry. 
and uh, I know how much uh, audience or our music lovers appreciate and how much we enjoy. Do you have any other advice for me and uh, or any other young clarinetists? Uh, okay, I actually have two of them I, for, for younger uh, players. Uh, number one is um, be honest with yourself. You know, really ask yourself, do you love music? Do you love the clarinet? And how much you love it? If the answer is yes, that's a commitment, commitment. So it, when you make a commitment, you have to give 100% by yourself, right? Uh, number two is uh, make friends as many as possible and be humble and learn from your friends, from people that's around your age because everybody has something that's really special that we can learn from. Thank you.